Callum Davies here for Australian Boxing Podcast. I'm joined with Luke Sharp, Razor Sharp, um, ahead of his fight coming up. Uh, just um, a little bit of a background about yourself, Luke, for those who don't know. Uh, been based in Perth for quite some time. Yeah, I, I live in Thornley. Um, I've been born and raised in Thornley, actually, in, in, in uh, south, south of the river. Uh, 28 years old, um, and I've just, yeah, just been boxing for the last 12 years and been pro for the last six. Loving it. Yeah, so um, you've been about the uh, sport for quite some time then. Yeah, yeah, well, I was, uh, I was started in Gosnells. Um, started in Gosnells, uh, training under Dave Hassan. I was with him during my amateur career and first couple of pro fights and then moved on from him to, to a couple other coaches, Angela Hyder, Grady Stewart, um, Dale Phillips. And uh, yes, and I've, I've, I've been everywhere, mate, all over the sport. And I've done a, a, a fair bit of stuff, you know, 21 fights now, so yeah. loving it. Yeah, you're quite well known in uh, in Australian fighting, especially. I've uh, been um, sparring a lot with Danny Green up to the the big fight with Mundine as well. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't spar him uh, with the, for the Mundine fight because he got a couple of Americans over here for that because yep. it's more of the Mundine style. Mundine's mm-hmm. got more of an American Slick style. style so, yeah. yeah. So we got we got a couple of Americans over here for that. But I was sparring him. Uh, I sparred him. Um, in Melbourne, I was his training partner for Kane Watts, um, that which was in Melbourne. Yeah. And he, uh, he 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 got me over in Melbourne for six weeks, and I was sparring him, training partner over there. But we've been mates, we've been sparring partners for the last like two and a half, three years, and it's obviously helped me uh, get some exposure because everyone looks at his stuff, you know. Everyone wants, everyone's interested, everyone wants to know what's going on with Danny Green. Yeah, definitely. You know, so I mean, it's always good to have a sticky head in his photos every now and then. Yeah. So you got a fight coming up, Luke. Yeah, 18th of March, fighting uh, Regan Desai in uh, in Brisbane. Um, good fighter, good young fighter. Um, nine fights, eight wins, seven wins by knockout. Um, he's uh, he, he, he's fought a variety of different people, but he's um, you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to be a good test for him. So I mean I'm training hard for this fight, and uh, it's uh, it's, it's got to be a good scrap. You know I'm looking forward to it because Regan's a good young fighter. You know he's a good up and comer. He's got good power amongst him, and he's got got a. Uh, Tall, uh, tall boxer style, so it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good fight. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, great. And have you fought in Brisbane before, Luke? Uh, yeah, I fought in Brisbane last year actually, yeah, and it was uh, it was unfortunate because I fought on Angelo De Carlo's fight night in uh, in, in, Brizzy, uh, in May. I'm pretty sure it was, and I fought for the Australian title um, against a guy named uh, Farris Chevalier, and I fought for the Australian title. But he, um, a week before the fight, I suffered a broken jaw. Um, Due to, due, due to the circumstance that I don't want to talk about, but I got, got suffered a broken jaw and it ruined my fight. It was yeah. a week before the fight. I told the promoter, still went ahead with it. Went out in the first round and tried to blow him out of the water. But he was too slick, too style, um, too slick, too quick for me. And uh, second round hit me with an uppercut. I took a knee and I didn't get up. You know, it's just um, and you know, thankfully Angelo De Carlo from uh, Ace Boxing Promotions has uh, given me another chance to fight on one of his cards. So, you know, he's a very well respected man and, and I appreciate it. But Brisbane's a good place to fight, you know, I enjoy I enjoy travelling in Brisbane too. Yeah. You know, the people over there are nice, the boxing's good, you know, everyone's respectful, everyone loves their boxing over there from what I can tell. So it's uh, it's gotta be good, I'm looking forward to it. And from being there previously, I'm sure you've built up a bit of a fan base over there as well, so sure to have some support for your next fight down there. Yeah, I've got a, got a couple of people who send me a couple of messages here and there. Um, you know, I've got the odd person on Facebook and social media that hit you up. But mm-hmm. um, obviously from the last one, I, people didn't really get to see much, obviously, because mm-hmm. it only lasted four minutes yeah. before uh, before the injury took place. But um, people see me on social media and... And yeah, as you said, you know, I'm pretty pretty well known across the country because of what I've done with Danny and what I've done in my own career. You know, so I fought Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide. You know, I fought all over the place. So everyone's seen me. So I mean, like I said, they, they, they didn't really get a chance to see me in the last one. But yeah. hopefully this one will uh, get a little bit more more time in the ring. And you're one of uh, the more prominent fighters on social media in Australia. Um, do you think that's important for you to get to the fans and, and get build a fan base for yourself? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it's good for it's good for when you got things like sponsors that you need to get out there, um, sponsors that you need to thank, um, and when, when you need to uh, you know get out there and, and show you stuff. And it, it obviously helps when you got more and more people watching. Um, 
So it's a, it, but the thing that you need to do is constantly put stuff up. And whether you get 20 followers, 100 followers, 5 followers, it doesn't matter. you just got to keep doing it and then people will eventually see your stuff. You know, the biggest person for that is Lucas Brown and he's getting followed by a lot of people because he mm-hmm. always puts stuff up. You know, like boxing, not boxing, everything to do with his day life, mm-hmm. the, the challenges he's got going, uh, going on at the moment with his, with his boxing and all the rest of it, he puts it all up and people follow it. Yeah. Slowly it builds. So you just got to keep doing it, you know, but you got to be seen. And uh, obviously winning fights helps that and doing things like this with the podcast helps. Mm-hmm. Um, just quickly before we continue, I just want to thank um, a sponsor in Melbourne, um, uh, Sam Siddiqui from um, Iraq Sports has helped me out with some gloves and, and uh, um, financial basis and all the, rest, all the rest of it. So I just want to thank him and, and uh, yeah, for everything he's done for me. And for a lot of you professional fighters, sponsorships are a major part of your career and things like that because a lot of people don't see behind the scenes the amount of hours, the training, even just the travelling to training, keeping up even part-time jobs to go along with a professional career is very difficult. It is, yeah. I've, uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been struggling the last couple of years because I've just been trying to um, do it. Uh, without having a job, and as you said, you need sponsors. But Perth is very small for that. Yeah. Boxing is the, uh, no, sorry, Melbourne is the boxing capital of Australia. You know, every, like, even Sydney is massive over there, and people get behind everyone because they get good marketing. They get good. Uh, there's good businesses over there that want to get on board. In Perth, is very small. Mm-hmm. Sponsorship in Perth is very small. So you have to go out. You have to look outside the box to do it. But sponsorship is a massive part of things. And I don't have any sponsors other than at the moment, other than. Um, Sam from Iraq, so I don't have any sponsors, and it makes it does make it hard because you're trying to concentrate on this. And as you say, people don't see the hours. And, I mean, they see you post things on Facebook and social media, but they uh, they don't see the hours of, of training you need to do, the the amount of equipment you need to buy, the, like they said, the amount of travel that you do. All it all costs money, you know, and it's and it's hard to be able to do this. Um, and you know, I've got a good I've got a good following now, so I mean, you know, like the sponsors actually get a good bit, bit of advertising behind me, so. If there is actually anyone out there that wants to jump on board, um, any level of sponsorship doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's all appreciated. So for some fighters, I know uh, living in the sport and constantly being surrounded by boxing, um, sometimes they tend to not be the biggest fans of other boxers and boxing in general. Are you, are you a fan of uh, the fight game and, and uh, looking up other fighters and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I respect anyone that gets in the ring. Whether they're an idiot, whether they're aggressive, whether they're egotistic, whether they're a really good guy, you know what I mean? I, I respect anyone that gets in the ring. Um, some people take it too far, take the game too far, you know, like they get aggressive, they get, um, they, they play the whole social media back and forth game and it makes them look arrogant and egotistic and like I'm always on, a, on a, you know, a YouTube trying to watch different fighters. If, if my opponent's got videos, if my up and coming opponent's got busier videos on, YouTube, then I watch them. You know, I watch them. I watch Regan on YouTube probably 20, 30 times now, mm-hmm. just trying to study him and see and see what I can. None of his fights really go that long because he's got that much power that he just knocks him out in the first round. But it's uh, you know, it's um, like I said, I respect anyone that gets in there, and uh, I'm interested in the game, like every aspect of the game, fighters, coaches, gyms, everything. And do you have a favourite fighter at the moment, Luke? Uh, not really, actually, to be honest with you, no. I know. I mean, there's not, there's not one person that I go, I mean, they're my, they're my favourite. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say no, I mean, like, there's you know, 20, 15, 20 different fighters that I like, but I mean, I'm a massive fan of Anthony Joshua, you know, he's a 24 and over, 24 knockouts, or, and he's, uh, um, you know, he's got a couple of big tests coming up with Klitschko, and then hopefully uh, Wilder after that, but he's a, you know, he's a, he's a brilliant boxer, and he physically is flawless. You know, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of him. If I, if I was going to say I'd, I'd, um, anyone's my favourite, it'd be him. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've seen in uh, the past recent years with the likes of Anthony Joshua and that the uh, the sport really growing in the UK and America. Um, there was talk of UFC and all this type of thing maybe taking over a couple of years ago. But we've seen a real emergence of boxing of late. Yeah, oh, big time. I mean, UFC came out. Um, obviously, you know, they had their UFC Toy 9 yesterday. So, I mean, like, you know, um, Dana White and, and the boys over there are doing a great job, but it's just the fact that your boxing's never going to die. No, it's not. And it's never going to get taken over by any other sport. You know, it's a world sport. It always will be a world sport. It's the world's, it's the world's favourite sport. You know? And I feel that Australian boxing is maybe on the, the verge of, of blowing up a little bit, especially with uh, the more of, um, exposure that the fighters might get and the, yeah. the television, you know, showing fights and things like that can only be better for Australian boxing. Yeah, 100%. Um, 
I mean, like out of anywhere in Australia, Melbourne's got some of the best boxers going in the moment um, in Australia. Um, you know, with the Maloney's um, and uh, you know, Jade Mitchell and a couple other lads. You know, like Melbourne's got some great boxers. Perth's got some great boxers too, as in Brandon Ogilvy, Nathaniel May, Wes Kappa. You know, we've got brilliant boxers, but it's just the fact that you know, like, the more exposure we get, the better it is. So I mean, these live podcasts, these live uh, live streaming online. Um, you know, any chance we can get to get on Fox there, which is very rare. Mm. Um, but, you know, any, uh, uh, Tony, Toge does, T- Tony Toge does a great job by getting uh, the Thunderdome's put on Fox there like the week after or something, you know, get a replay of it up there, you know, so people can actually watch it. Um, it is great exposure, but we need more of it. Great. Well, Luke, Razor Sharp, thank you so much for the interview for Australian right. Boxing well, Podcast. Yeah, any time. I'd also like to thank Ty Coleman for having us down at CDL today to make this interview happen. Yeah, thanks, Ty. I appreciate it, mate. Yeah, thanks a lot, Luke. Cheers.